Hi guys, welcome back to So You Think You Want to Build a House. So what my plan is today is to try to get some of this uh, premium waterproof flooring down. Uh, it's called like a rigid pl vinyl plank. Uh, this particular one come from Lowe's. It uses the Cortec technology. But what I'm going to try to do, I've, I've made me a reference line right here. And, and there's probably 17 million videos on YouTube telling you how to put this stuff down. So I'm not going to try to tell you how to put it down. I'm just going to tell you how I tried to arrive at how I'm going to start this stuff. Because layout is probably one of the most important things in making the floor look good when it's finished. So what you have here, I just made me a chalk mark here to, to measure everything from. But, you know, we're running along this longest wall down through here, which is probably the right thing to do since it's a long straight wall with no interruptions. Um, but starting here, we can start with a full board, but we need to think about where the boards are gonna break as we go through this house. So, you know, we have a wall right there at the door. We have another wall that's a little bit shorter here. Of course, you have the back sides of those walls. You have places like for the dishwasher here, but the important places are things like the other side of this room, you have a wall. Into this hall, you have a wall. All these walls are running parallel to that wall over there. And then you got the inside of this wall, which is gonna be different on both sides. You come into this room, that wall happens to be the same, whether it's inside that closet, inside the laundry room, or inside that front bedroom. So that's. If you get one of them worked out, all of them's gonna work out. Then you wanna end up over here at the house in a good place at the other side. You don't want a little bitty strip over here. Uh, and then you got things like this bathtub that's running the same direction. And of course you don't want a little strip there either. So the vanity, all that stuff comes into play. So it's not, if it was one big room, you could just kind of center it and make sure you had an equal width on both sides and go with it. But when you've got all of these different walls to contend with, uh, all of them a little bit different dimensions, it, it pays to you know, take a little bit of time. And, and they're not all gonna be just the way you'd want them because you're gonna have to pick and choose what's the, uh, what's the most important. So uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to snap three rows of this stuff together here. Uh, I'm gonna wait and do the last row and a half or whatever winds up back here last. Uh, one one thing reason is because you got these vents you're going to have to cut around and that's going to you know reduce the stability of your starting uh, board and the second thing is i've cut some little pieces of plank there's a couple of them laying on the floor here and what i'm going to do with these after i get three three of these locked together i will lock these pieces here at the seams and I'll get this thing exactly where I want it on this floor and then I'm going to pop a screw in these scrap pieces and I'm going to do that at every joint and on either end. And that'll give me something good and solid to beat against going forward because you know you want to be sure and get this stuff clicked together good. You can, if you don't get it together just right you wind up with a gap in the joint and it's going to come apart on you as soon as the temperature changes. So it's important to get it seated good. Uh, I haven't done any of this before. I put down, I don't know if it was called Pergo or Y-Tech, probably in the 80s, late 80s, at my parents' house for them. And uh, it was a, a laminate flooring, probably the wood fiber type stuff. And you had to glue every joint. There was no locking joint. It basically just tongue and groove and you had to glue it together. So what they recommended you do at that time was glue three rows together and tape them and get them good and tight and let them set overnight. And then come back the next day and do the rest of the flooring so that you didn't get all catty wampus with it. So I'm gonna do the same concept here, just using this locking mechanism, which will be a lot easier than that old glue. But that's the plan. I'm gonna spend a lot of time on my knees this weekend.
Well, I've been working about five minutes and I've already made my first mistake. I was so worried about layout this way, I didn't think about coming this way. So I started with a full board on my first row and came out down there at the end and had a, about a half a piece. So I cut it off and brought it up here and started out with it. That's the end of the last piece on the other row. But when I got down here at the door, the full piece lacks about an inch or so and I don't want to put a little bitty piece like that in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shorten this board by probably, I don't know, six inches and slide the whole mess this way. And then I'll just have to add a piece to the end of this row and change that first piece up there on the other end. That's it's the easiest thing to do, sort of taking it all back apart again. And it's really hard to put together to get started because both boards are trying to move on you. Once you get a little bit of it down and get a good stable base, then you'll just have to worry about the one board you're putting in and it'll be a lot easier to beat it and, uh, and get it snapped in. After reflecting on how hard those were to get together, thinking about taking this apart, I decided that I'm just going to take about five inches off of this whole end slide the thing down and that'll give me a longer piece down there at the door and I'll, i can use these little blocks for the, uh, the stop blocks here in a minute anyway okay that's big blade cuts it good but it sure does sling a lot of <laughs> vinyl around but i thought ahead and brought the vacuum cleaner in Okay guys, now that I got those three rows snapped together down through there, what I'm gonna do is go to every one of these joints where I've put a piece of scrap on the back side of it, and I'm gonna measure over from my line, in my case, to the front of this uh, groove or uh, side of the board, it's gonna be 17 and a half inches. So I'm just gonna adjust this at every location. It'll be what, every four feet, and I'll get it right on 17 and a half, and I will, uh, pop a screw in that scrap piece. And again, that's just temporary to hold this floor nice so I can beat against it without having to worry about everything moving. And then uh, after I get the floor down, I'll come back and pull those up and lay these last two rows and cut my grill or my uh, hose out for my uh, HVAC grills at that time. Okay, it's starting to get easier now that I've got those box screwed down you just pretty much take a row and go with it. But um, this next row, I'm gonna be running up against this little wall I built. Now, I'm gonna put baseboard around here. Baseboard's about 9 16 so I'd like to have the stuff up under it as far as I can. But you can see I've got some uh, extra room around here, an extra quarter inch or something, that I'll put a little space around before I put my baseboard in. But when we put this stuff together and fold it down, we can't put it under this piece because you just, you'd have to cut the lip off to be able to do that. But what I can do is go ahead and notch this piece the same thickness as the flooring and put the flooring tied up against this when I lay it down so that when it goes down here, it would have room to move and go up under it if it expands or moves around some. So I'm going to uh, cut this little board off the right height. And what I'm gonna to use to do that uh, is this little, vibratory tool but this is a, a piece of the actual flooring i use this this is a marking block i cut the uh, groove off of it over here but you can see it's got this little foam pad on the bottom of it let's see that's the actual included pad with it but that pad is about the same thickness as that blade here so what i did i took a scrap piece and called it a jam block and just took a putty knife and scraped the pad off so now when I lay this on the floor down here and lay this thing on top of it, the thickness of that blade's gonna cut through the board down here and I should have about the perfect size gap. Uh, it wouldn't matter so much right here because uh, the baseboard's gonna be going on it. But when I get around to door jams where I've already got the trim on like those interior doors, you're going to want it to look good so this will be a good experiment here to see if this actually works by taking that pad off the back of this thing so that should work good under door jams and whatnot 
Uh, this one actually has the pad on it, so it goes right underneath there. Just enough room for it to slip around good. We got this run down to where we had to go around this little wall. So I was originally going to stay over there on the big side, but I figured I'd go ahead and jump in here and learn how to make all these little cuts to go back in these little niches and whatnot. So uh, got the kitchen done. Smallest room in the house is finished. <laughs> Uh, what 12 boxes out of 73 so uh, about six more times I'll have this thing lit <laughs> uh, it's Saturday night it's about 6 30 Lowe's is not going to be open tomorrow for Easter so I need to run and get some of the clear gorilla glue because I think I'm going to need it when I get to areas like around those door jams and hopefully I'll, I'll get to do some of that tomorrow if I have time so uh, I'll probably come back here and work for a little while though. I need to get me some uh, a late lunch here And I can start this should, this should run easy. I should be able to do a lot of boxes quickly in here Just be a cut on either end so I'll uh, See what I can get done tonight and, uh, Be ready for tomorrow Well, it's dark 30 Otherwise known as 20 after 9. I'm usually in bed by now <laughs> but Got 17 boxes of it down. Uh, that's what about, not quite 25% of it. Of course, I may have some left. I ordered enough to do the entire area of the floor and you've got walls and cabinets and bathtubs and things like that. So uh, don't seem to be much waste. Very little, you know, just a few pieces here and there that you can't use for anything. So I think it's gonna be all right. It's just gonna be tough on the old back and knees. Got me some better knee pads I had at the shop. Missy went by and got them for me, so that helped a lot. But I'm gonna call it quits tonight and try to hit it again in the morning and see if we can get out of this living room. And then I think I'm gonna go down that hallway and try to do mom's bedroom and bathroom first before I tackle the laundry room and the back bedroom. Well, next afternoon, happy Easter. Uh, I've got over to the uh, center wall I'm going to work on that end of the house first. It's the bigger end because of the way the bedroom bumps out. So uh, get it before I get too burnt out. So what I did, I had a little strip of wood I had ripped off of something probably when I was building this little knee wall. So I screwed it to the floor right here where you go into this hallway to keep anybody from damaging the tongue or the groove rather on that last piece of wood right there. So what I'll do next is uh, like I say, start down this hallway and then you're gonna start branching out into other rooms. So I get to learn how to do that. Uh, this piece along the wall here worked out good. I actually ripped it the same width on a table saw out on the porch. So that's another nice thing about starting with a new house is most of the time everything's kind of square and parallel. So uh, the baseboard, I should be able just to use the uh, four and a half inch baseboard all the way around and not even have to put toe mold on this particular floor. I think the only place I'll need tow mode will be uh, under the kitchen cabinets and probably under the vanities because of the way they're made. I couldn't go up under them. But I'm going to uh, take a break. I just, I was looking for that wall there and when I found it, I'm gonna take a break and uh, then I'm gonna start down that hallway there, try to branch out into that front bedroom. Okay, this is when it's gonna get difficult to do anything. That's why I had to go get that Gorilla Glue yesterday. This flooring, in order, it's got a pretty good locking mechanism, but you've gotta pick it up at a pretty good angle to get it together. You, uh, you can't force it together down here. I've tried laying a piece down and hammering it, and it just does not go. You have to get it up that high before it'll lock in problem with that when you got to go under this door on this side and you're going to have to go under a door on the other side as well uh, you can't pick it up at all to get it to lock in um, you know you could probably if, if this was a bigger opening you could get part way under the door uh, with one side by laying it down and sliding it but you still can't get this lock back together so what you end up doing when you have a situation like this you have to take off the part of that locking mechanism with a most people use a little plane a little hand plane to shave it off real easy 
about a hand plane. Unfortunately, the blade is so far from the edge, it won't, it won't get over close enough to do it. So I'm going to have to use a razor knife. Uh, let me get a piece and show you what I'm going to do. Okay, here is that lip that locks. And if I can get it up here, you can see it goes, wraps right around and locks in there. So when you try to push it together, it just will not go. It's, if it hits up here and hits down there, you'll just end up breaking something. So what we have to do is trim off this piece, pretty much making it not a locking joint anymore. It may still have a little bit of a lock, but it won't be as strong as it was. That's why you need the glue. So again, my little planer, <laughs> just the body's too wide, the knife's too far from the edge to get it. I might be able to stick that blade way down uh, and let it ride up on top. I'll try that first. If that don't work, I'll get a razor knife. Okay, we can run that thing down like that, but and lay it up on top and do a pretty good job. Thing you gotta be careful with, it's sticking down so far that you could damage the edge that you could see. So I think I'm just gonna use a utility knife for right now. Okay, again, what we're gonna try to do is remove part of that lip right there. Like I say, if you had a little hand cleaner that would work, that'd be perfect, but that's probably enough right there. You can see, if I, let me get them closer together. If I can just push on them, it's already together. So it still hooks some, but that's the only way we're gonna be able to get it together and slide it up under the door at the same time. Okay, so we made it over into the bedroom by using our glue together technique here. Uh, basically, I cut that lip off of this board across through here. And I cut the lip off of uh, this board here. It's got a little uh, groove that hangs out there. And uh, then I was able to notch this board around the, of course I cut these door jams out. I was able to notch this board around the wall. Give me plenty of room for expansion in there. And I laid everything in here and dry fit it first. You still have to tap it together, but you can get it together and get it apart uh, with that groove, uh, not, not so deep. But I, uh, I dampened the edges with a damp rag and put the clear Gorilla Glue on and then just drove these pieces in. I then put the tape on it just to uh, to hold it and also give me a, a visual not to step on this area until that glue dries. I probably won't take that tape off till tomorrow. But then what I wanted to do was get in this room and get started. Of course, we're out from the wall because we had to come through that doorway and again, I'm not using any transitions here. Uh, I think uh, Jake Porter asked about that, said that some of these products make you use a transition. This particular product says, that's one of the features of it. You don't have to have a transition for, I don't know, I think it said 2,500 or 3,500 square foot of area. You didn't have to have any transitions. So said so that was one of the selling features of this thing. And of course, that's what I wanted. So at any rate, we got in here, I went ahead and ran a board straight on down through here. I went ahead and tried to snap one behind it. It was pretty tough to get together going backwards and not being able to really beat on anything because I was worried about knocking that glue joint loose. So what I wound up doing was just uh, getting my straight line down through here and putting down some blocks like I did over on the other side when I got started. So I had something to beat against and I knew it wouldn't move. I went ahead and of course put one out here as well when I did that so that I could beat against this one board. Once I put that down, things went together a lot easier because I had, you know, I could put some pressure on it. So I've got all of these back to that last row, which will need to be a cut row, but I need to turn around and go across the rest of the room this way. So what I'm gonna do, I've got a bunch of this scrap now that's been cut out of the middle of the boards. I will, uh, cut me a few pieces of that and come in here and screw it down back here against this wall. And then I can take these up and start beating the right way back this direction. So I'll be starting here and I can run 
all the way out into this hallway. Eventually, I gotta jump over here in this closet and do exactly the same thing I did in the bedroom, is you know, work my way backwards into the closet, so. But it works. Uh, like I said, I'm not gonna go into detail on this because I'm no, it's the first time I ever done it, so you don't need to be listening to me on how to do it. But just, you know, check out YouTube. There's a bunch of videos on there on how to do it. And I was really glad. I've been trying to figure out how I was going to do that. So I was really glad to find those videos that, that showed them just trimming that lip off and, and gluing it together. Of course, the glue would probably be a stronger joint than the snapping together things when it once it dries. Uh, again, they used to put this stuff together with glue. Uh, and a lot of times when people use the regular laminate in a bathroom, uh, they will glue every joint just to try to make it more waterproof. Well, I'm gonna call it quits for today. Uh, this this row here is interesting. What I've actually done is I kind of run it backwards to where I could run this piece up under the door jam this far. You notice this one, I couldn't even fold it down. So what we did, I cut the lip off of that groove on the end of this, this plank and then I snapped this plank in back here and slid it under the door until I got close. And then I put the uh, clear glue on it and hammered it home. So that's, that's an actual glue joint there. And what I'm going to do here, I actually cut the tongue or the groove off of this plank over except for where it comes up under this doorway. And this plank coming this way, when I get, when I get it ripped down to length, I'll have a little finger that sticks out on this side. and. I will snap it in over here and drive it home with a little Gorilla Glue right there. So that, that will be a joint about a half inch wide. Uh, and then uh, we'll be going into the bathroom. That's why I decided to quit. I'm gonna have to actually cut that other door jam before I can put these next pieces in. And I just really don't wanna fool with it tonight. But uh, everything's working out good. Everything's staying good and straight. It's amazing the tolerance that they keep on this stuff. Uh, I mean, I've, come, I've come all the way across the, the house and everything is still just lined right up with this floor decking and if you measure off that wall it's right on so this stuff is amazing how they can keep it that that close on tolerance so once we get into here that's going to be all of our uh, uh, hard cuts over here the closet will be easy since we're going with those barn doors uh, there's no door jam there to worry about, so you can actually fold the piece down anywhere you are, and then the baseboard will wrap all the way around and cover it. Got the fan on in here. If it uh, keeps getting warm like this, we might have to have a uh, air conditioning video. I got all the stuff at the shop, I just haven't got around to putting it in yet. 66 isn't bad, but it's gonna get warmer than that soon, I'm sure. Well, lunch time the next day, uh, I came on in and cut out the underneath those uh, jams and fit these two pieces in. I think I had to maybe cut a piece right there too. But bottom line was this little joint right here is a glue joint. I was able to lay this piece between here and there down and just leave this lock all the way down and just drive it back together here at that glue joint. And then I had to take that little lip off of the groove down this joint and all the way down this joint because this piece has to go under the door and then come back out and lock together. So I cut off most of that lip, drove it together, glued it, drove it together. And then I've secured two little blocks here to hold it for now while I go back over in the bedroom and work. It'll give us glue time to cure. I'm going to scoot all this stuff out of my way sweep the floor and keep going toward that outside wall. Well guys, next afternoon I got here after I finished up my day job and I ran this bathroom on in. This is actually a glue joint right here where I had to trim that lip off so I could get it together and get it under the door jams because you're not able to lift it up and fold it down, just lock it in. But after that, everything went good. This was the one wall where I was a little worried about and I think the baseboard would cover it because the baseboard is about 9 16 but it was so close. I went ahead and just went out there in the scrap pile and found me a piece that was a similar color and uh, 
glued the tongue into this groove over here with that clear glue and taped it here. And again, that's just gonna be there. It's gonna be under the baseboard, but I just felt better having it there. But everything else worked out good. What I'll end up doing here is just, I'm gonna try just caulking this little seam right in front of the shower, it's about a quarter inch. And again, the only expansion we got this way is this one, it's barely over one piece wide right here. So I don't think we'll have much movement. And if it does, it can move over there where I left my, my full uh, quarter to three eighths of an inch. But that'll be the bathroom knocked out everything. You know, it's pretty easy to cut out once you get going. You just have to kind of, you know, layer where you're going to be and marker and get close and maybe trim a little. I just used a hole saw to cut that. And again, the flex, or the pecs flex enough to be able to lock that piece in and fold it down. So that turned out okay, I think. Uh, I just got started down here in this second hallway. And the other day, I had quit right here. I actually screwed the strip down to protect that edge when I was running across it and whatnot. So what I did, I was able to take a, a piece with a normal locking tab on it and lock it in over this far. Now, from here to here, I had to trim that tongue off because what I did with this next piece that wraps all the way around the door is I slid it into this tongue and groove straight back flat. And when it got back here, of course, it touched. And if I hadn't cut that lip off, I wouldn't have been able to drive it together without breaking something. So you just trim that lip down Put you a little bit of clear glue there and drive it on in and it, it still latches i mean you don't cut it all off and it still latches but the glue is just a you know a little extra uh, help there now after that you can start running your regular boards and that's what i did i didn't even finish that row out and the reason being i wanted to be able to screw this finger that sticks into this laundry room 10 feet down to the floor and keep it good and parallel to everything so that's what I did there. I'll have to come back in after I finish beating all this together, take up these strips and work these last two pieces in backwards. Um, so then everything worked out good. And I'm back over here at some more door jams. And what I've decided to do here, I think I'm gonna be able to do it with a minimal amount of glue. I've got this piece uh, <laughs> where it went under this door jam. Fortunately, he missed this door jam. So that's just a straight shot. I didn't even finish running that because I wanted to get this done. I can run that in backwards from, uh, you know, from there on back. But I've got this drove under to where it, the next piece uh, that I have to notch underneath the door jam here, I can slide it in. And then that will be in this bedroom. And I'll do the same thing to it. I'll run it through here and then I'll screw it to the floor with some scrap and work the room that way. And when I finish beating everything together that way, I'll come back and take these scraps up and work, work the closet. So I'm not going to need a glue joint here. So what I did over on this side, I'm going to do basically the same thing, except this piece here, I've got it drove up tight to the wall in order to cut this lip off because I didn't do it before I put it in. I wasn't sure if I would, I would have to, but I'm just not going to have room to fold another piece in here uh, with this door trim on here. So what I'll do is I'll trim this one little lip off right here. I'll put this thing back where it goes, which is basically tap it back about uh, a little over a quarter inch. And then the next full piece will run over into the bedroom and I'll be able, if I can hold my mouth right, to uh, lock it in here and then beat it over to the wall under the door and it'll beat across this little lip because I took it off and I can squirt me a little glue in there before I do it. And that'll get me through the most difficult part. I think right here was what I was worried about because there was some door jam. And then that one there will just, I may be able to break a board on it again to where uh, I can get it in there without any glue, but I doubt it. I'll, I'll probably end up with some glue on that side just simply because you're folding stuff this way and there's just not room to do it. But. Either way, it can be done. You, you might you might need to trim a little tongue and get some glue, but it's a, a lot easier than I imagined it was going to be when I first started thinking about it. So I just wanted to share that. And again, I'm, I'm no flooring guy. There's lots of videos on the internet that talks about this sort of stuff, but I was just giving you some real life examples of where it happens. 
well this side worked out crazy good um, the way it worked out this board pretty much landed just up under this didn't have to notch it there's still over a quarter inch over to the walls plate down at the bottom so there's plenty of room for expansion so all I did was took a full length board stuck it in the groove back here and laid it down and then tapped it using an old piece of wood on this tongue and groove or a scrap piece tapped it all the way to the wall then I had this piece which was only two and three quarter inches wide and I went ahead and decided to try it I cut it uh, and kind of twisted it because it's flexible twisted it and got it started here and had my little uh, pull bar behind it and just eased it right in it snapped right in everything's great no glue at all so the uh, in here I'll of course continue this run on down with just put it in lock it in and then this next run all I have to do is just take a, a piece or a full board whatever it takes lock it in slide it up under the uh, door jam and there won't be any glue required I can't do it one-handed but it'll it'll tap right up under there once you lock this down it gets a little harder to push so that's my last uh, difficult join everything else there's no jams on okay made it into the bathroom and up against the back wall here so I'll just laid a grill in there to make sure I got my cut good but I need to clean out my boots here soon but uh what I'm doing now, bathtubs, or at least my bathtub, uh, are usually not, or a little wavy in most cases because of the way they make them or whatever. But what I've done here, I had this little strip. Of course, I screwed it to the floor to hold it in place with a scrap piece while I was running all this wood because you got to beat against it and it'll easily, you know, start pushing on you every time you smack on it. So what I've done, I, I roughed out a, a piece, a scrap piece I had that would fit you know in here and kind of snapped it in and then i wanted to take a little i want to leave a quarter inch gap here so i had a quarter inch board you can't see you can see a sharpie on this stuff but you can't see a little ink pen it just disappears in the ground so i'm going to try to stick this uh, piece of blue tape on there mark it with the ink pen and now take it out and cut it and hopefully it'll fit in there and have exactly a quarter inch gap along the tub that i can caulk well, that seems to have worked pretty good. Uh, pretty much quarter inch all the way down the line. So I'll do this second piece. And then I gotta decide if I wanna go ahead and pull the toilet up now or just wait uh, and just save enough boards to run back to the wall. I need to, if I pull it up, I already have the baseboards ready to go so I can uh, put it back down right quick. So I think I'll just count out. It's probably not over about five boards total. Got this closet done and full of stuff out of the utility room because in order to do this utility room floor the rest of the way, I need to put some cabinets in here. So I ran out to, uh, to Lowe's this afternoon when I got through with service and picked up a couple of cabinets. Uh, just the, you know, let's kindly stock. You can see they're made out of a furniture board or glue board, press board. Uh, that's one reason uh, I like these cabinets better is because, you know, they have truly have plywood in them. But what I was originally going to do in here was buy two of the cabinets at Lowe's that were, or actually going to put some wall up too, but get a couple of cabinets from Lowe's that were unfinished because that's the cheapest thing they stock. And then I was just going to paint them white. Uh, they put these on sale 10% off this month so with that it made like a couple of hundred dollars difference and uh, i'm really tired of painting so uh, i just bought the white ones they got some kind of plastic film on them right now i hadn't peeled off but um so i'm gonna get started on these and fortunately i thought about these cabinets and i picked up a, uh, a filler strip and the reason you need that is when you have a drawer next to a door where you got trim sticking out here if you just cram it up against the wall this is going to happen so i need to come out at least three quarters of an inch put a filler strip in there so that you got plenty of room to get the drawer open um, of course what i whatever i put down here i'll put up top on the wall cabinets and keep them lined up uh, i noticed that kitchen cabinet has no back in it the actual sink cabinet has no back in it 
it's just got a strip across the top and maybe down to the bottom so uh, probably I need to go ahead and uh, uh, put some spackle in that hole around that pipe clean that up a little bit uh, of course I didn't paint it because I thought I'd have a cabinet with a back in it but that's what I get for thinking uh, but for less than half price uh, these will be fine for a laundry room Okay, I went ahead and decided on five eighths of an inch for the uh, thickness of this filler strip. Uh, that clears the door jam easily. And unless you're just gonna go really crazy and get it out there, uh, you're still gonna run a chance of getting your finger hung in it. So uh, it was, uh, I don't wanna go this way any further than I have to cause these stock cabinets, you know, two 30 inch cabinets is what I'm gonna have here. So that's gonna start encroaching into my washer dryer space real quick if I come on out this way. But this will this will allow the door to open and still have plenty of gap in case the door got a little sideways, but it don't really get sideways, don't feel like. Uh, of course, you'll probably be pulling from right here anyway. Oh, one more thing that, uh, hey, second shift showed up. Uh, one more thing, somebody commented on, well, a couple things. On the kitchen cabinet, somebody said just caulk this gap about five seconds after I ripped this piece of filler. I haven't screwed it in there yet. The other thing was somebody said I'd have a problem with this because it was up against this pantry with when I put the hardware on it. Um, of course, depending on what hardware you put on it, if you use any of the uh, you know loop top hardware that you pull on and put it in any of these holes, then it'll clear anyway. Uh, if you use a round knob and put it in one of these diagonal holes like right there, then yeah, the other knob will probably hit. But the difference between the door opening all the way and opening that far really doesn't hinder the cabinet. So it'll be fine either way, whichever hardware mom picks to go on it. But back in here to the laundry room, I'm glad you showed up. Nice. Uh, I was getting ready to set this cabinet and I figured if she came over, she could help me pick it up and put it, pick the other one up and put it over those lines. But if you're ever doing kitchens and you're able to order your cabinets from say one of the big box stores or somewhere like craft made or one of those names and you know you're going to have this situation you can order a cabinet that has the front rail extended out say inch and a half or three inches whatever so you don't have to have a seam right there so that's a real nice way to do it if you're ordering custom cabinets so keep that in mind if you do a kitchen down the road somewhere Well, we uh, pretty much have the flooring done, except for the, uh, you know, wanting to have a toilet. So went ahead and cut those pieces, but I haven't put them in yet because I'm gonna wait till I put some baseboard down. What I could do is go to the other bathroom, put the baseboard in there first, and then just move the toilet, something like that. Um, I do have an expansion joint here. It don't look like it, but this thing's up off the ground, probably a half inch from the subfloor. So that thing's got plenty of clearance under it. Of course, I got my my joints under the sheetrock there. Got at least a quarter inch, probably close to a half inch back to the wall in most places. Of course, the baseboard will cover that up. Uh, I didn't start to even try to work on this countertop yet. I'll have to actually, you know, shorten it about a foot and put an end kit on it over here. Uh, probably buy a solid surface laundry sink and cut a hole and put it down in there. Of course, this is just a sink based cabinet, uh, no drawer. This one actually uh, has a drawer. So, and it clears the door over here now. Went ahead and ripped my, uh, well, I had the table saw out and I ripped the filler strip for the wall cabinets for when I get around to picking them up and putting them in. Uh, let's see. I cut these pieces to length and staggered the cuts and saved the end pieces in case I wanted. Sometimes when you just run the same piece across an opening like this, when the rest of the floor has been variegated, it looks a little funny. I don't know that this will with that toilet breaking it up right in the middle, but uh, once I pull the toilet out and start putting it down, I'll have that option to use these ends uh, with another piece and you know stagger it just like the rest of the floor but probably the less seams around the toilet the better uh, truly but that'll go in whenever i whenever i pull that up um, didn't have a tremendous amount of scrap on this job um, i've got seven boxes to return there 
uh, got almost a whole box left over you know not quite a whole box but that'll be for repairs or just to have some but these seven boxes that'll be nearly four hundred dollars uh, taken back and here's the here's the scrap pile got a little, couple little pieces over there but this is pretty much all the scrap uh, a lot of these long rips of course was along the along the edge you know when we come over here and finished up these two rows we left out now if you guys um, do this that's definitely a good way to go because this stuff will get squirrely on you the fact that you can you know start out here and screw you up a scrap piece behind it to hold it good and firm i think it makes all the difference in the world uh and i, I learned that from a guy if you're going to do any flooring you should go to his youtube site uh, i think it's called uh so that's how you do that Hang on, I'm gonna look that up and make sure I give you this right because the guy's really good and he's very helpful. Here is his YouTube page. It's called So That's How You Do That. Uh, he also has a website of the same name with a lot of good information on it. But you know, if you're gonna do any flooring, of course he does you know more than just flooring. He does tile, showers, stuff like that. Uh, so he can uh, he can, he can be your go-to person for any type of flooring or tile work. Uh, He's, he's very knowledgeable. I think he lives up in Wisconsin. His name is Joe uh, Latendre or something like that. But he, he just seems like a super nice guy. And he's, he just puts out videos all the time trying to give people tips on doing this and, and encouraging people to go ahead and try to do it theirself. Uh, which I think, you know, that's what these kind of channels are all about, you know, sharing information. Uh, I, I really don't think I could have uh, done as good a job on this floor without, you know, his advice or his videos there to, uh, you know, give me uh, ideas on like, you know, doing the trimming on the uh, tongue to get it to go together on the groove, uh, and gluing it. You know, I was, I was really struggling trying to figure out how I was going to put these together under these doors. This was my last joint uh, that had to be glued, so I've got that blue tape on it. Again, when you trim that off, you don't get it all anyway, at least when you use a razor knife. So it still snaps together. You have to drive it together. And here's an example. Since that little closet, uh, it was almost as long as a board and I wasn't gonna fool with trying to stagger it in there because I figured there'd be more chances of something coming apart and besides it's a closet, you know. Probably not gonna see that floor again once people move in. But, uh, it, you know, it does look kinda, you know, after seeing over here and you come over here, it's like, huh. That's all one color. So I might have to go ahead and stagger that in there on that toilet. But I've got, uh, I'm gonna put the saws up. I've made me a little cardboard uh, pad here to set them on. I've, I've run out of bare floors to, uh, to use now. Uh, but again, I wanted to get all that ripped. Uh, it's almost like raining confetti on you when you're using that table saw on this stuff. So I'm gonna pack it in. I've got this, uh, load of dirt out here pretty good size load of dirt uh, hopefully tomorrow it's calling for some rain it rained just a few minutes ago but I think it's uh, clearing back off I'm hoping it'll be hit or miss and I can do it but I'm gonna try to uh, bring my brother-in-law and his little tractor back down the one we dug these footers with and do some grading back here uh, probably pull this little temporary porch and ramp down and get everything graded good so I can start this porch also want to get it graded where my condenser is going to set because I'll tell you, I sweated some today. It's, a, you know, getting up in the uh, upper 70s around here now. And it was 75 in here, so that's just too hot to work. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.